Hi, welcome to Module 2. This is the Getting Started module. So we're going to talk a little bit in this module about some of the new features QuickBooks 2015 has, and then we'll jump right in and start creating your company file. So if you're new to QuickBooks, then all of this is new, obviously, but if you've been using it for a while, you'll notice that there are some things they've enhanced to make them work a little bit better, and also some brand new features. Now we're not going to address everything new in this particular section, but as we go through some of the other modules and we see some new things, we'll be pointing those out as well. So the first thing I want you to notice is that we're used to seeing the Home tab when we first come into our company file, but now they've got an extra tab here called Insights. Now, what Insights is going to give you is a quick way to see the key performance indicators of how your business is doing. So you, what you'll notice at the top is that it has your company name, and there is a place to upload your logo in case you were going to use this on some professional documents that you might be sending out. Here's your profit and loss. So if you think about it in a business, the first thing we want to know is are we making money? So we'll be able to quickly see for any particular date range, our net income, what our total income was, and our total expenses. And they also show it to us in this graph form. So you'll notice that as you point to a particular month or a particular expense or income option, you can see that particular number. Now notice you've got an arrow that points to the right, and there's also one on the left. So if you wanted to scroll through some of the different things you can see, on the next screen you'll actually see what we call a previous year income comparison. If I click the arrow again, I'll see top customers by sales, and then again I rotate back through the profit and loss. Now when I scroll down and look at this, on the left you're going to see options for your income. I'm going to be able to see how many open invoices I had and what the total is. I'm going to see if any of those are overdue and how many were actually paid in the last 30 days. Notice you could go straight to create an invoice from here if you were ready to do that. I also will see here on the right my expenses. Now you're going to notice there's a donut chart here that shows me a graphical representation of those expenses. And what's really kind of cool is if I double click on any piece of this donut, I actually run a report on that particular category. So now you can see I'm in a transaction detail report, and this is showing my gross wages for paychecks over here. Now let me go ahead and just close that out, and that's going to give you a quick, like I said, graphical representation of what your company looks like at this point. Your income, your expenses, making money, losing money, that sort of thing. So this is a neat little feature they've added. Now here's something else they've added. If I go up to my customers on the menu and I come down and click on my income tracker, now we had the income tracker before, but what we didn't have is this little part where it tells you all of your time and expenses. These are your billable time and expenses. So if you wanted to turn that little part off or on if it wasn't on, notice the little gear in the top right where you can check or uncheck that option. Now I'm also seeing how many estimates I have, how many open invoices I have, how many are overdue, and how many were paid in the last 30 days. Now I can filter this list. So let's say that instead of looking at all the customers, I'd like to look at just Christy Abercrombie. Notice now I'm seeing any transactions for Christy. So let's say that this second line here which is time and expenses for Christie. These are not billed, but I'm ready to go ahead and invoice them. So if I go all the way to the right hand side and I drop down my list, I can actually create an invoice right from here. And it will pull in any of those expenses or billable costs that I need to go ahead and invoice Christie for. So that's kind of neat how that works. Okay, so let me show you about another neat little feature they have called pinning, and I'll just show you where this is, and later on we'll spend a little bit more time on this. Now I'm going to go ahead and close this invoice that I happen to be on right now, so let me go ahead and maximize it over on the left, and that way I can actually go ahead and close this. And I'm going to go ahead and close this window as well. 
Okay, so let's say that I'm looking at my customer center. So I'm going to go ahead and click on customers and I'm going to go ahead and click on the customer center. Now when you're looking down here at the transactions, the context, the to-dos, look at the notes tab and you'll see there's a little pin next to this particular note. So what pinning allows you to do is whatever note happens to have a little pin that's the one that will take precedence over the other note. So what's going to happen is when you run certain reports, you'll be able to see those notes on those reports. You'll also be able, when you go into an invoice, for example, for Christy, you'll be able to see a little pen over to the right and it'll show you the latest note that you had set up for Christy. So like I said, we'll look at that a little bit later in depth because there's a little more I want to show you about that. Now here's a couple of minor little features that are kind of nice but useful. For example, when we want to create a portable file, it used to be that we would click on file and we could go in and actually create a copy. Well now we can choose this send company file and we can create a portable company file right from here. And I won't click on it now because in the sample file we're not going to be able to actually go through that option. But you do have the ability to um, have it automatically remember the last file name and path that you saved this portable file to. And that way it comes up automatically. So if you were going to put it in Dropbox, for example, it would automatically come up and say Dropbox there. Okay, how about some report options that are new? Let me show you some of those. And I'm going to close the customer information window here. Now I'm going to go up to reports and go ahead and run a profit and loss for my company. And one of the things you'll notice they've done with reports now that's really very nice is they've color shaded some of the levels. So you'll notice that the highest level, which is called the parent level, is this gray color here. And then below it where you have the sub levels, those are a lighter color gray. So it's just a quick way to visually enhance the different levels, the parent and the child levels of your different reports. Now notice the arrow to the left. I can click the arrow and it will hide or show whatever is underneath that particular parent category. And I can come down and do this for any of these. So that's kind of neat as well and the report will print however you have it set up and it's looking. Now here's something else really cool that done with reports. You can now add a comment to any of the line items in any report. Here's how this works. If you go up to the top, you'll see there's a button that says comment on report. And when you turn that button on, you now get these little bubbles, they're called clouds, next to each one of your line items. So I'm going to scroll down and find the payroll expenses. And that'll be this line here. So I'll click the bubble to the right and I'm going to put in a comment. Now once you put the comment in, you go ahead and hit save over on the right hand side and it's now saved. Now if you want to hide this little comments area, you just come down to the bottom and click these double arrows or pop them back up with those double arrows again. Notice the X all the way to the right is how you're going to delete this comment and this little pencil here is how you're going to edit the comment. Now here's what happens. Let's say I go ahead and hit the save button on the top left of this report. Now you can name the report anything you want. I'll just name it Profit and Loss for now and click OK. And it tells me I successfully saved this and it tells me how to open it. So I'm going to click OK and I'm going to close the report. So here's how you would open a report that has comments. You're going to click on Reports on your menu and you now have an option that says Commented Reports. And there's the one that I just saved. So I'm going to double click on it and there it is. Now just so you'll know, when you have commented reports, these don't update. So here's something else neat that you can do with reports. Right now, if I wanted to send a couple of different reports to one of my clients, I would probably save it to my desktop and then I'd create an email and I'd attach each one of those individually and then email them over to my client. Well, you don't have to do that anymore. If you went to reports on the menu, you can now actually process multiple reports. So when you look at this, you can process memorized reports or commented reports, either one. And all you do is go down the list and check off the ones you'd like to be able to send. 
Now you can actually display the ones you have checked, you can print them, or you can email them. So if you did click email, it would send them over as a batch. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel this and close out of this report right here. And we're going to go ahead and stop this video at this point. And we'll have another section of this. So if you want to join me over in the next section, I'll finish up working with some of these new features. Hi everyone, Simon here from Simon Says It. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed the video, please give a thumbs up and leave a few comments. And if this is your first time here, I'd love for you to subscribe. Every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, new videos are uploaded to our YouTube channel. So go ahead and click on the subscribe button right now. I'll see you next week with additional videos.